if a bear came around and was harassing and somehow I, I, I wouldn't hesitate to think that it's a good idea to take, you know, kill a bear that was causing problems. But I think we need to do our best. It's really pretty simple, which is mm -hmm. you just be very aware of smells. You don't let any of them happen to any significance, which means take, in, take care of your food and your cooking and everything else. Not pouring salmon oil out on the ground in front of your house. Not letting bears get into food, and then not being so afraid of bears that every time you see one, you feel you got to kill it. If they're not trying to get at your stuff, it's just not that big a deal. Um, so if you were to see a bear, you want to sort of try and maneuver around it, and being with a bigger group really helps, and making loud noises like aware them that you're nearby. Not having your food or garbage out where they can get it, and. Uh bear spray and firearms and uh, making noise. I must say I don't like to make noise all the time. <laughs> when, when I know there's bears around, I do. <laughs> if, if there's bears around, I make, make noise when we move and carry guns and bear spray. We yell and go crazy when we see them. We throw rocks. We store, store garbage um, in a bear, bear proof 55 gallon barrel before we take it out of out to town. I don't have any bird seed out from like March till, well I only feed birds in February and March. I don't do my own compost. I take my compost to the Ray Mountain Center because they have a, a fence, around, electric fence around it. We do have our gas out. I mean sometimes gas cans can be an attractant. Yeah. They like to chew up plastic stuff so we're yeah. not as good as we could be. Yep, yeah, that's true. We have not, we've talked about getting a freezer but we haven't done it yet because we don't we're not just going to put a freezer outside with a bunch of meat in it. I think the main thing to keep the bears away is to keep a, a clean homestead and, and just not have uh, any kind of food around whatsoever. Burn all your trash, get rid of it. Uh, don't have anything that would uh, entice the bears to come into the yard in the first place. Uh, keeping a really clean house and having an electric fence around the yard. I think it's just keeping a really clean camp and always being aware of where your food is and what it's putting out and who might be interested. <laughs> Sometimes I'll have trail snacks in my backpack and I'm just really careful not to leave it outside overnight. Just little teeny things, little details that you can forget about. Yeah, I think bears are cool animals and I like having them around. They're kind of a symbol and part of the wilderness here. Um, I guess maybe it's different when you see them on your property. You don't really like want them to be there, but it's their, you know, this is their environment too, so try and be respectful of that. And I think that comes down to taking precautions and, um, you know, respecting the wildlife so they don't get fed and then develop bad habits. I was really careful. I went to Second Chance in Anchorage and bought this military locker that you could lock. It was a file cabinet and I hauled it out here on a sled and I stored all of my food in this locking file cabinet. And the bears would just knock, knock it all over and just roll it around, but they never got in it. Uh, well, we want to keep all the food inside stored, so like our garbage also. When they get into our food, they get more aggressive towards us. And then, then we get they, more aggressive because yeah. they And then we'll, we'll try and we'll have like... So where do you store your top ramen then? Uh, in the cupboard. In the cupboard. Yeah. That's fine. That's Probably inside. Desserts and candies and stuff. Well, like we on top of the cupboard. So like we keep that on top of the cupboard. Yeah, we keep what? So we have like the cupboard, and then we have and like, then like this jar full of candy. It's on top, so that's pretty high. It's like, so the bear yeah. won't be able to get it. No. Yeah. And we our slop water. You know, we have the slop bucket under the sink. We take it all the way to the bluff. And we throw it over the bluff so it disperses all over the bluff. And if they if they come, it's so far from our house that they're not going to associate it with our house. So we are we are very careful. But you know we've got a wall tent out there we were living in before, and I store all my guiding gear, my clothes in there. And I went there two days ago to get something for a trip and realized I'd left a bunch of candy bars in one of my backpacks for like last month. And no bears gotten into there, which you'd think they would. Um, someone, I think a lot of people don't want to say anything like, oh shit, a bear, okay, I left my garbage out and a bear got into it, but yeah. I would really like to know that. I know you, you kind of screwed up, you shouldn't have done that, but 
I'd like to know, like I said, I think it was like 10 years ago, the Park Service got a grant and they gave away those 55 gallon barrels that you could put food into. And I would think providing more resources like that would be a good thing. Like I'd use, I, I would love one right now if we're putting our garbage into, because like now we take the garbage and we put it in my truck so we can take it out of the valley. And then my truck stinks of garbage. We burned anything smelly in the burn barrel. And we were always very conscientious about you, know, you start with an empty barrel and you put really flammable, you know, paper and cardboard and things in, and you gra and you keep it going really hot, and you gradually add all the yucky stuff which you have kept secure in a building. We take a lot of precautions. Right now, we're living in a yurt, which isn't bear-proof at all. It's right on the ground. It's not up on a platform like other people do with yurts. So what we did is when bear season came on, we moved our kitchen and all of our food out of the yurt into our sauna, which is made of log and wood, so it is bear safe. So we're sleeping in one structure, eating another, kind of like you would do like in a field camp. And I've also got an electric bear fence around the yurt. So like right now when I'm here, that's the way it's set up there. Just because a bear can just like literally rip right into it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a pain in the ass to like get up in the morning and then leave your a house to go a hundred yards to another building to cook breakfast, you know what I mean? Like, but it's less of a pain in the ass than me going home right now and finding the yurt trashed and destroyed and, and an angry yeah, you know I mean? yeah, and a bear in there. So, you know, I think we did a pretty good job with that. I feel like, you know, that's adequate. Um, uh, well, we, we, our cabin is bear proof now and we just keep our food inside the cabin. Uh, mainly it's just a, uh, it's a log cabin and the door opens out uh, so they can't push it in. Uh, they used to, when we had visqueen windows, they used to come in through the visqueen windows, but we put glass in and we've cut the trees down, most of them that are near the cabin. They would climb the trees to get in the cabin. Uh, when we're gone, <clears throat> we generally put uh, plywood on the windows that have spikes going through the plywood. Uh, because what a, what a bear will do if he wants to get into a place, they'll, they'll kind of feel around. Even though they can see, they'll, they'll sort of feel around and feel, they feel the spikes, they'll generally leave it alone. We would board up the windows on the lower level here. And my study, which is a couple of hundred feet from the house, has um, shutters that uh, go over the windows. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have any issues with bears on the property. We have three dogs that um, I think do most of our bear protection us, but there are definitely bears in the neighborhood. Um, pretty often we'll see bear tracks on the roads around here. Um, even, even on the driveway as close as, you know, the other side of the creek we'll see tracks, but never on the... On yeah, the about a quarter mile away. Yeah, no, with, without, without question it's dogs. Um, and, uh, you know, he, this one in particular, he's a Karelian bear dog, so he's actually specifically bred to harass bears and other wildlife. So, so he's, a, he's an exceptionally good guard dog in that manner. Um, in some ways, I think any dog, a bear, just the scent, you know, they, they, they smell that and they don't like it and they don't want to have anything to do with it. Are you going to do anything? Maybe not. Okay. Look at those powerful bear eating jaws. We don't. Our, our <laughs> property isn't as bulletproof as it could be as far as bear, you know, bear proofing it goes, but at the same time, I feel like we've got a really good set up with the dogs and they've been very effective so far so we have a dog now jack so he's really good he he, he smells bears and it's all over him i mean he's a tiny little dog but he puts up a hell of a bark and he chases the bears away pretty good and i know since we got jack i've seen a lot less bears up there mm -hmm. for sure and my neighbors at the night scene of the main ones Jeremy and Allie and Paul and Jenny, who have these big gardens, also have piles of dogs. I mean, there's so many dogs up on their property that, like I asked Jeremy, he hasn't seen a bear out there on his property in years, probably never will. I had a dog team for 20 years, which kept bears at bay. They would come in proximity, but the dogs would alert and they would never end up in my yard. And my dog chases bears, and so that can be nerve-wracking. Great when you're at home, nerve-wracking when you're on the trail because then you can bring a bear back to you potentially. <laughs> what would you? How would you get it to go away if it didn't go away? Um, I don't know. I think I would like. I don't know. Call for help. 
um, having a plan, like what is your deterrence for bear, and if you are going to carry a firearm, you should be very deliberate in what type of firearm you're carrying. Understand the serious limitations of a lot of firearms. Be extremely competent in the use of the firearm. And it's not, you don't just buy a gun and you're done. You know, I think that's a fallacy. And if you're not really good with a gun, if you're not going to spend the money to buy the proper type of gun, I think you should just skip it and go bear spray, personally. We, we talk about deterrent rounds from a shotgun, but I swear rocks work great. Yeah. And, and, they're, and, my, and our entire yard is full of rocks. And bears, when they realize that that weird hairless two-legged critter can reach out at a distance and actually touch you <laughs> with something, that clicks in their mind. They're like, this is not normal animal that mm -hmm. I've dealt with before. And they leave. I hit a bear with a rock once. I did hit a bear, that's right. I haven't shot a bear, but I did hit and nailed him right in the chest. And I actually had witnesses. It was a good shot, man. <laughs> it was kind of lumbering, it kind of went, I had to get close and I started as I was walking, I was grabbing a few rocks and, um, you know, through like, it was like warning shot rocks, you know, like, get out of here, and it wasn't really focusing. And so, I was, uh, I kind of, ch he kind of got off in the woods, but he was still taking his time and he kind of looks back at me and then he kind of stood up on his hindquarters to kind of sniff. And that's not a, an aggressive, they're more checking things out when they do that. And so, I like, I saw the shot. It was perfect. It was like, you know, that was between the trees and he stood up and I was like, Meow! and it nailed him right in the chest and he took off. And then I heard, I heard, uh, I think it was Hollis actually. It's like, nice shot. Yeah, I had a friend who uh, was working for, while well, we for fishing game and he was working the sound with the guy who um, went to college as a division one pitcher for baseball. And they had a really problem bear in their camp, and they were afraid they'd have to shoot it. And his buddy's like, "Well, let me try something." He just picked up a rock and threw it like a pitcher would, hit this bear square in the head, and knocked it almost unconscious. Like they, it, like you know, knocked it to its knees. And he said, "And they're on the island, so whenever they saw that bear again, all they had to do was bend down and pick up a rock, and that bear was like gone." But I can't throw a rock that fast or that hard. But it'd be pretty cool if you could. So the bear was coming around the house, and I started spraying the spray and ran at the bear. And he was gone long before the bear spray got to him, but I ran into the bear spray, so I found out about that. Uh, it wasn't too bad. And there was a weak can of bear spray, because I had already used it, I think. When you, when you fire off bear pepper spray, it goes out in this cone, and if the bear is anywhere in this whole general area, like, the, gonna it's going to get hit by yeah, the versus one projectile versus a bullet, so easily missed. It's a little piece of lead, and it's traveling, and it's got to hit the right spot mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. that bear. Mm -hmm. And you've got to get the shotgun or rifle off your shoulder. you got to take the mm -hmm. safety off. you got to rack around to the chamber. you got to bring it up. you got to sight, sight it. And you got to do all that incredibly fast and accurately. And if you don't practice you regularly, yeah. you're not going to be effective at what you're trying to do. In places like right here, if our neighbor tried to shoot a bear in their front yard, yeah, you don't know what else you're gonna hit. They'd exactly. probably put a bullet through our whole yeah. wall. Yeah. <laughs> the, the rubber, the rubber bullets have a much longer distance. You know, they'll go further. Yeah. And they're and they're they hit really hard. Mm -hmm. The problem with rubber bullets is that um, if you hit a bear in the wrong spot, like in the ribs, there's a potential that you can put a rubber bullet right through and into a lung, which has happened. Um, uh, it happened at Denali National Park. Same with cracker shells at close range. Um, you can put a cracker shell through quarter inch plywood at close range. So the bean backgrounds are far less likely to actually injure the bear, but they have a pretty short range, so you have to be pretty close to the bear for it to be effective. So, okay. yeah. One, uh, one time it was in our cabin here in Kennecott. It was uh, just in our yard out and trying to get it to leave. I, uh, I had cracker shells as well and uh, bird shot, and I've used both of them on one or two bears in Kennecott. <laughs> I used to carry a seal bomb around with me, and now that would be so dumb, I would start the whole forest on fire if I threw a seal bomb at a bear, but that's what I used to do. Non-lethal, cheap, <laughs> Yeah. and easy to get on like Amazon.com. Amazon I was walking with my dog, 
puppy uh, in the thick woods and he stopped and lifted his head so I stopped. We had just seen a pile of rabbit guts and I just looked up and there was a grizzly 25 feet away, just broadside to me. I had my gun, but I was busy scooping my jaw off the ground. Uh, I, I, cocking my gun was the last thing on my mind. I know it's, it's, it's a, a false sense of security. The manual says, uh, make sure you fire, you're 40 yards away and uh, fire so the bear's, you know, where you, the bear is facing away from you so you don't hit him in the face and be prepared to defend yourself. <laughs> Almost everyone would agree that like a 12 gauge shotgun is pretty adequate. A 45 70 rifle is very adequate. Pistols, you get into like some gray areas with that. Because um, you always see lots of people on here with a gun on their hip. It's like, well, you know, what is, is that going to work? Are you just gonna, I've heard lots of stories across the state of Alaska of hunters, especially wounding bears and getting killed or mauled because the bear charges for that. So I think the two times I was, well, the one time when I was charged, and I'm, I consider myself very confident with a firearm, I couldn't have shot that. I could never have gotten a gun ready and shot that bear. So you're not carrying it in your hands. It's on your shoulders and your hip. And I probably would have created a really bad situation in that instance. But anyway. I think firearms are really good when you're in your tent, and if a bear's coming into your tent, that's what I like the gun for. You know, if a bear tangled with my dog, I'd shoot it. But, um, but that would also involve having the gun, so. <laughs> but I don't want to kill a bear unless I absolutely have to, so there you go. <laughs> and I don't want to shoot bear, I honestly don't. I did shoot a bear the first year I was in the state, and I decided that uh, I'm not going to shoot any more bear. I don't care how big or how nice or ugly or whatever. <laughs> Even if they're mad at me, I don't want to shoot one. I just like bear. <laughs> you go through all the rules of what to do around a bear, and that's great, and you should, but sometimes there's just an unpredictable bad bear, and they could be old, you don't know, and that's why you want to have the firearm and be ready, because you just don't. You can do everything right, and if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, it's going to be bad. Yeah, nine times out of ten, 99% of the time, that's totally fine. But there's a good chance that if you spend this much time in bear country, that eventually you're probably going to run into a bad one. Mm -hmm. You know? And, yeah, so take a little extra precaution now. Mm -hmm. But I don't, there's no fear. Like, we walk around our property. I walk through the woods every day of my property. I never bring the gun with me. We had a, another neighbor, and what he would do, it scares the hell out of people, is he would have spikes on the door, and then he had a floor mat out as well. And underneath the floor mat was a the most god-awful horn of some kind, kind, and so as soon as you stepped on the, the, the mat, and it would scare the bear away, theoretically. Well, the problem is, <laughs> is we'd get snooping tourists around from time to time and they'd walk up to the door and they'd step on the mat and they would just go ballistic. <laughs> just like a bear. What do you do when you see a bear? Give an, ex give an example. What do you say? Sometimes if I was hiking through the brush, I would just carry a couple of rocks and keep snapping them together every now and then. A lot less annoying to me than bells. We always look both directions before going around the side of a building or across a trail. Um, if there's a lot of bears around, uh, sometimes we'll be wearing a sidearm, a pistol generally, uh, just for safety's sake. I mean, they use these roads, I mean, they take the path of least resistance. Um, so it's funny, I look both ways when I'm hoofing out to the road. And whenever I smell carrion, I'm very wary, <laughs> you know, because it actually, I mean, it's, they're interested in it, and it might be them, too, because they actually kind of have that smell, generally, if you ever get that close. <laughs> and I've smelled them before. I don't remember what, what the odor was. It wasn't a good odor. <laughs> when we're riding bikes, we don't go too fast around corners and things like that, because we know that that's a really good way to surprise. Uh, standing on all fours, it was reaching up to the window ledge. It was so beautiful. 
And then I think of the, uh, I really, it's one of those things you want to invite him in, is pet him, but you know you're not going to do that. That'd be the worst thing for them, and you don't want to, you wouldn't want to, it would, not a thing you want to do. And if it's interested, then I scare it away. You know, if it's interested in, you know, checking things out, if it's just walking by, which I've seen that happen where they just like boop, 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 go down through the hollow and just keep moving, then they're fine. But if they like go over to the, you know, shed and start nosing around, it's like, mm mm, this is human country and skedaddle and I use whatever non lethal means I have first, you know, to, to dissuade them from associating this place with food or things of interest. A bear that has never eaten human food and might like the smell but doesn't like to deal with us is a good bear. And I think, you know, good bears and good people don't especially want to get close to each other and that's how it should be. I think the bears would qualify their experience in our yard as negative. Yeah, we throw rocks at them, we're not friendly yeah. to them, so... <laughs> They're not bad interactions for us. They haven't been scary, but we try to be mean to them. Um, At some point, I'm going to do the impression that he does when a bear comes mm. in the yard. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> you do. That's what you do. You yeah. run after it like this and you throw rocks. Sometimes in my underwear. <laughs> Depends what he's wearing. Depends on what time of day it I'm is. I'm just like, okay. We, but we, it's effective. Yeah, yeah it's effective. Um, Was it uh, just a few years ago? When the soap berries were out, there was a young teenage bear eating the soap berries right down here in the lower yard. And I said, like, wait a minute, what's this bear doing so close in? So there were a bunch of us around. We just kind of, a group of us kind of moved out down that way shouting and, and he moved off. I was near the cabin. I wasn't really, I mean, I was startled, but I just yelled at it. I made a lot of noise. I, I think I remember clapping at it and, and going towards it just a little bit and it just ran off. I've hazed a lot of bears out of the yard over the years and out of places just generally around McCarthy and, and Kennecott. Yeah, I usually try to make the experience unpleasant for the bear by yelling at it or throwing rocks or scaring it away as soon as possible. I just don't want the bear to be coming back maybe when I'm not there or worse. You know, I guess my big fear is like in the middle of the night I get to pee or something, I step outside and there's a bear out there because I'm just like barely awake and groggy, especially when it starts getting dark out. Like right now it's a little different because it's light out, but you know, I don't like being, I don't want to be scared at my property. I don't want to worry about Kristen out there, you know. Yeah, I figured that the best thing you can do when you encounter a bear is make sure that it does not feel comfortable around people. That's the best thing for the bear and the people. And if I can get, if I can spray it with bear spray, that's the best because that can make it feel really uncomfortable. We once had a black bear treed out here at two in the morning. The whole, you know, the kids were here and the kids and our dog blazed over and poor bear, we terrified it. It was just a little black bear and I was spraying up at it with bear spray. I had this huge beautiful deck out there, like best view around, like perfect sun exposure, just great, like swimming holes a short walk away and I would spend a lot of time sitting out on that deck. Yeah, this black bear, he just kept, he just kept coming around and Eating the soap berries right off the deck, like where your tripod is. Imagine that being a bear instead of a tripod. He, he, making himself right at home. It's a little close for comfort, you know? So I don't want him to in, in any way get the idea that it's okay to just make himself at home here or at somebody else's house. Like a neighbor who's more likely to shoot him than peg him in the ass with a rock or two. It seems to me that in the at least the first half of the century and before, if you saw a bear, you shot at it. Or, or uh, unless it was, generally that's what you did. And these days, you don't. You, you might take a picture of it or try to get close. And, um, I think the bears have, have changed a lot since, uh, since people stopped doing that. Should we all, make bears afraid of us. <laughs> but I'd, I, I like the bears to come through my yard, I guess. Because uh, I'd rather feel friendly towards my bears that if I live out in my cabin for a while, I may change my mind. 
and everyone wants to watch it for a little while and like get some shots, get some pictures, we'll stand on the deck, we'll watch the bear like tourists for a while and then they'll like let it wander through or then maybe they'll try to get it to move off whereas it's better to just like immediately jump on it and all act like crazos and get it to leave but there's the tendency to want to like watch the bear for a while and let it do its thing in your yard which is probably not the right thing to do but I don't know it's it's a hard thing to get that to be people's first reaction because it is cool to see a bear and it's kind of cool to see it so close to your place. I mean, so... And a lot of people just aren't comfortable hazing a bear. Yeah. Frankly. You know, it's something that I'm super comfortable doing. Oh, i got to get a picture. And so they... And they step a little closer. And the bear doesn't seem to do anything. And they keep stepping a little closer. That bear knows that person is there. You get within the, the perimeter of the critical distance, you could get charged. Mm. So... I think people are not necessarily aware of the fact that if a bear might act like he doesn't notice you, but it's simply that he doesn't have to deal with you the way things are right now. It's like uh, training your dog or something. You need to uh, establish some sort of uh, rapport, uh, or with a horse. You know, you, you may not. You, you have to discipline sometimes to. Uh, to coexist, so that may be may be a good idea. And I, I think I, I will uh, be chasing them away if they are <laughs> if they do come in my yard. I expect one way or the other.